Yo, what's up? It's Gabriel, just another fan TV, uh, here with another video. And I want to talk about the philosophy and the way the Ravens are building their team. Um, I feel like it's a little bit of a different approach from what other teams are doing it. So, you know, let's get, let's get into it. So the competition is really is about wide receivers versus offensive weapons um, and where the Ravens put positional value at. Um, it starts at the draft, right? There's been a kind of a, a, a rhetoric that the Ravens haven't drafted receivers, which is simply not true under the Costa. I mean, if you want to look at Marquise Brown, Rashad Bateman, Tyler Wallace, Devin DuVernay, Miles Boykin, he's taking his shots with receivers, all right? But now let's talk about this year's draft. We trade Hollywood, so a lot of people expect us to do what our second pick was to try to get a receiver with that pick. They take they take Linderbaum, which was a knee on his team, and Linderbaum was probably still the best player available at that time. So cool. Second round, 45th pick. This is where everybody thought, okay, this is the spot. And who was there? George Pickens, right? Who I would love to be a Raven, who all Ravens fans would love to have been a Raven. The Ravens take David Ojabo. Now, this didn't go over well at the time to most Ravens fans. I had no problem with it. Uh, especially since if you watch the, I think it was the pre-draft presser, uh, the constant really name drops old Drabo as like, um, oh, it's unfortunate what happened to him. You know, he was in play for us at probably at, at 14. So it shouldn't be no surprises that they took him. You know, sometimes the Costa throws little hints out there about guys he likes. All right. Uh, so he took old Drabo. He's going to play this year. So, you know, I wasn't too upset about it. And the more I look at George Pickens, the more it's become obvious that he's not Harbaugh's kind of guy, for better or for worse. I'm not saying I agree with it, but we got to think. When Harbaugh took this team over, the Ravens were an aggressive team, right? Big personalities. Uh, that's where the leadership came from. Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, uh, Terrell Suggs, on and on and on, guys like that. That's, that's the leadership, big, aggressive personalities. But we got to see that. That's kind of been, since Harbaugh's taken over, that's kind of been phased out. And even during, um, you know, the ending time of Ray Lewis, when Harbaugh first came along, we saw that that was kind of a, a, a push and pull back and forth between the old regime and the new regime, right? So that just leads me to believe that Pickens, who he has some perceived um, on-the-field attitude issues. You know, we've seen him throwing the guy from Georgia Tech into the you know, into the stands, you know, when they when they got into a fight. And I personally had no problem with that. You know, I, I love that kind of aggression. So I have personally had no problem with it. But we got to be honest about what the team is and where it's going. And that's just, that's just who they've been. The Ravens are drafted high-character guys. They don't want any guys that have probably even the potential that something happened off the field, which is not a bad thing, right? I mean, I'm not saying, you know, you should draft guys who you're scared every day something might happen. You know, I'm not saying that, so. Um, but this is this is who the Ravens draft, you know. In the past, maybe we, they take a risk on a guy with some character issues. Uh, that's not really happening anymore. You got character issues, it's not. It's, no, Ravens not really looking at you. The Ravens are really drafting a lot of guys from the Senior Bowl, which means they're more mature players in a sense. You know, a lot a lot of team captains, things like that, guys that they Ravens feel like they can depend on to be on the team. Um, so with that being said, let's go to the fourth round of the draft. They draft two tight ends. Now, this also kind of sets people into an uproar because I even made a video on it. Or oh, the Ravens turning back the clock to 2019, right? Three tight end sets. And it's kind of a yes and no thing. Yes, it's three tight ends again, like it was with Andrews Hurst and um, Nick Boyle. But all three tight ends we got are better than, than they were in 2019. So Mike Andrews is a way better player now than he was in 2019. You know, all pro Mark Andrews, consistent pro bowler, Mark Andrews, maybe the best tight end in the league. Kelsey is, he's not slipping, but no, he's, he's older. So Andrews is really right there. Him and Waller, right, right behind Kelsey, right? If not already surpassed him. So Charlie Kohler, do I think Charlie Kohler is a better athlete pass catcher than Hayden Hurst? I do. Hayden Hurst coming out draft. Yeah, he was a first round pick. I know that I'm comparing him to a fourth round guy. I know. I get it. But we got to be honest about Hayden Hurst, man. He was a 25-year-old pitcher who found football late because he was trying to be a uh, MLB pitcher. His his ceiling was already capped. 
while Kohler where was at Iowa State and caught, I think, 23 or 25 touchdown passes. He was a top-tier passing option in their, in their offense. Then you got Isaiah Likely, who is – he's really kind of a unicorn, man. He's, he's 6'4", 6'5", 240. Runs a, he runs a 4'5", right? Doesn't seem that fast, but watch his tape. He's running past linebackers, running past DBs, running past safeties. He gets the ball in open field. Dudes are not catching him. So – that's better than those two guys are better than Hayden Hurst, Ricky Hayden Hurst, and uh, Nick Bowl. Those those two guys are better than that, in my opinion. So those are the kind of weapons the Raiders are put are building around the offense, right? Now we got the wide receiver room. We all expect Rashad Bateman to take that next step. All of us really do. So I think Rashad Bateman is going to get better. Wouldn't that be what we expect? Somebody has to take the wide receiver targets that Hollywood um, left. Will it be 146? I think that's what Hollywood had last year. No, probably not, right? But can it be 120? Sure. And Bateman can turn that 120 into 1,100, 200 yards, eight, eight to 10 touchdowns. That's a really good season. So that's where I'm at at the wide receiver room. I got faith in Tylen Wallace to, to be a contributor. Got faith in James Prochet to be a contributor. And Devin Duvernay, he looks like he's going to continue to be a gadget guy. I think he can do some things that play an actual receiver, but I think he's just going to continue to be a gadget guy right now until we see something different. And they brought in these UDFA guys for a reason. They brought in eight receivers, um, all UDFA. One of them at least is going to make the roster. I think the Ravens still sign a vet. Who that vet is, we're not sure. Uh, they do sign a vet. Obviously, I'll make a video talking about it. Um, right now, it's looking like, for me, if we're talking about vets that can actually contribute to the team, Julio or Will Fuller, but that's a separate video. So they're, that's the wide receiver room. Seems like there's two divisions in the Ravens kind of Twitter. It's uh, it's the guys that say, oh, roll with the young guys. Let's see what the young guys got, man. You want to add all these vets, but when y'all just say play the young guys, now, now y'all don't like the young guys. Then there's the other camp is saying that if we don't add a young, if we don't add a vet wide receiver right now, somebody who else can contribute who's a proven talent, don't get your hopes up for the season. But there's a middle ground in there that, yeah, let, let the young guys ball out, but also add a vet into the room that's not going to take away too many snaps, but can contribute and have a solid effect. We got to find the middle ground. And I think that's what the Ravens are going to go for. Right. But I think what's really being lost in this in this conversation of offensive weapons is the guys in the backfield, man. J.K. Dobbins and even Gus Edwards are underrated pass catchers. J.K. Dobbins was all the hype out of training camp. Obviously, it's just training camp hype. We know how that goes. Was that he was set up to have a kind of a Christian McCaffrey kind of season because that's somebody who he models his game after. All right. So that means catching 50 passes plus. And if we think about it, let's think about some some of the things that happened in preseason, right? In training camp. Training camp, that comes out the photo of J.K. Dobbs going one-on-one -on -one with Malik Harrison and skying over top of him. I mean, I think we all seen this photo. All right. Then we see in the unfortunate in the game we actually played and got hurt in. How he get hurt? Did he get hurt right up the middle? Did he get hurt on, on a stretch or a toss? No, he got hurt catching the pass, uh, a screen pass, which we know the Ravens don't do a lot of screen passes. So for him to break all the screen pass in the preseason, I really think was showing that they were setting up J.K. Davis to really catch the ball this season. And who's to say, if they were going to do it last year, why wouldn't they do it this year? So my, my point being is this, right? Let's not just say we don't have wide receivers, so we don't have weapons. I don't agree with that. Do the Ravens need to add wide receivers? Yes, of course they do. Of course they need to add wide receivers, just because they need the bodies. Right now we have four reliable guys that we know are going to make the team. Every team usually carries about six wide receivers on the active roster. So they're still too short at the bare minimum. And you need more guys just to get through camp. Right? So, of course, the Ravens need to add a receiver. But don't look at the receiver room as it currently stands and say, we have no weapons. Right now, we have Rashad Bateman, weapon. Mark Andrews, Charlie Kohler, Isaiah Likely are all weapons. J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards are, all, uh, is, are two more weapons out, out the backfield. Tyler Beatty is a weapon. 
So when I say the Ravens have a good offense, the Ravens have offensive weapons, this is, this is what I mean. Now, do we wish it was more wide receivers, more guys on the outside that were uh, proven talents? Of, of course we do. But that's not the current situation. Until that changes, this is what we got. And the Ravens still have a really good team. So when they when you say the Ravens have a lackluster wide receiver room, that's true. All right. We know that's a, it's a field with young guys who haven't done much in the NFL, if anything. But don't say the Ravens don't have weapons because they have weapons on this team. So I'm excited for the season. I can say that every video. Um, the Ravens are going to be a good offense. How good? We'll see. But they're going to be a good offense. Uh, you know, if, if Greg Roman's system runs stale, I can see how about making the change. I really could. But as of right now, uh, G, G Rose, the guy, he's going to run the offense to how, to how he sees fit. And uh, Keith Williams and T Martin are there to help, man. And listen, if you got any concerns about the wideouts, this is what I want you to do. Go on Twitter. Keith Williams' uh, Twitter name is uh, Wideouts. So that, that, that's his Twitter name because, you know, he's like a, he's like number one wide receivers coach. So his name is just Wideouts on Twitter. Look at how he's teaching just, just regular guys. Not regular guys, but watch how he's teaching guys how to play the receiver position. And then know that our receivers are getting this same teaching. They're learning from literally probably the best guy right now. So that's why I have a little more faith in the receiving core that we have. I still want a guy added to the room. So don't, don't get me wrong. I still want somebody added to the room. That's a vet. That's a proven talent. That's why I say there's a middle ground. Because you can want your guys to be successful and still want a guy in the room. All right. But the Ravens have offensive weapons, and they have the coaches to get the best out of these weapons. It's in um, Keith Williams and T. Martin. All right, I firmly believe that. And G. Rose gonna do his thing in the run game. All right. So, all right, it's your boy Gabriel. Just another fan TV. I'm out.